All right, greetings, YouTubers everywhere, Python coders and PyCute users. This is Alan D. Moore. I'm the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python from Pact Publications, a book that will guide you all the way through the uh, PyCute library and how to create awesome GUIs using it. I'm creating this video today because I've seen a lot of beginners, uh, especially on Reddit, but other places as well, who are trying to use Qt Designer to create their GUIs, and they're running into a lot of problems. Um, it's kind of the same problem, the same basic mistakes. And so I wanted to address that today, kind of talk you through this, and show you the right way to use Qt Designer uh, to create a GUI. So here we are in the shell. Uh, let's go ahead and launch Qt Designer. Now when you launch Qt Designer, you get this, um, this dialog here, and it asks you what you want to base uh, your window on. And we're going to just do widget, um, and that's going to be a Q widget, um, which we'll see is important later. But just remember we're going to do widget, that's just the most basic kind of window here. Uh, with no frills. So real quick we're just going to create like a basic login window. Alright so we're going to come down here grab a label, drag it up here login to my cool application. Alright, we'll stretch that out. Go ahead and set our layout style to a form layout. Okay, stretch that back out across the whole thing. And we'll edit some properties here. See, we'll knock the font size up to maybe 16, make it bold, and see, we'll change the alignment to center. Okay, now every uh, login is going to have username and password. So we'll add those items. There we go. Oops. It's not going to cooperate here. username, password, okay. Now one thing you definitely want to do when you're using Qt Designer is you want to rename all of your inputs to something that you'll remember. Right. We'll call that username edit. This will be called password edit. Alright, because when you do program, when you do use this form of your program, you're going to need to refer to these things to get the data back out of them, as we'll see in a minute. Alright, last up, we're going to add a push button here. We'll make this just say login. We're going to call that submit button. Alright, and then we can uh, adjust the size. All right, let's control R. We'll test that out. So we've got user and pass. Oops, so that's a problem. We don't want to see our password. Let's escape out of that. That can be fixed here. We'll go down to echo mode and change that to password. All right, let's control R again. User pass login okay good all right so there we go we've got our thing let's go up here to save and we're going to save that as login box and notice down here the file types we have ui all right so it's dot ui let's go ahead and save that 
Okay, so that's all we can really do right now in Cute Designer. So the rest of this, we're going to have to go back to the shell. So let's close out a Cute Designer. Alright, so what we've got is this loginbox.ui file. What in the world is a .ui file? Uh, let's open it up. Well, as you can see right here, this is some kind of XML file. Okay, it is an XML file. And this XML file describes our GUI. Alright. Well, that's not Python code. Obviously, we're using PyQt. We need Python code. How do we get Python code? Alright, let's close this. So PyQt comes with a utility called PyUIC5 which is short for Python UI Compiler 5. What this is going to do is it's going to compile our UI file into Python code. Okay, well, let's just look at the help for this real quick. So as you can see the basic usage is we say PyUIC5, we add some options and then we give it a UI file. Um, one of our options is this output option which is going to tell it what file to put it into. So let's go ahead and run this PyUIC5 we'll send the output to loginbox.py and we'll give it our UI file here. Alright, let's go ahead and run loginbox.py oops, pi Okay, nothing happened. Huh. We would probably have expected that that would just launch our little login window, but it did not. Okay, well, what do we've got here? Okay, let's look back at these options. We've got this execute flag, so generate extra code to test and display the class. Okay, so let's rerun PyUIC5 with the X flag. All right, Python loginbox.py. Ah, success. All right. There is our awesome login box. Okay. Of course, it doesn't do anything. So you might wonder at this point, well, what do I do to actually make this a program? And so the natural thing for a lot of people to do is open up this Python file. And let's take a look in here. Okay, so scroll down here. You can see what this does is it creates this class called UI form. All right, and inside this UI form class, we have a, a function or method called setup UI, and it generates that user interface that we made. So you can see here is the password edit, here's username edit, uh, here's our submit button, okay, and all this font stuff is set here, all these labels that we added. And then down at the bottom, we have a little if name equals main guard. Hopefully you've seen that before. And it creates an application object. It creates a Q widget. Okay, remember that our form was based on Q widget. It then creates an instance of our UI form class called setup UI on the form class and shows the form. And then we run app.exec. App.exec. Well, that sounds like the start of our program, right? So what a lot of people will do, obviously, is they'll start right here with this little code and they'll start editing it. And that's your first mistake, okay? Because I want you to look right here at this little thing here. Warning. All changes made in this file will be lost. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people just kind of blow this away and say, uh, "Well, never mind that. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to keep this file." And maybe we'll add some code here. Okay, this is my awesome login box. All right, we'll save that. Let's go back to our terminal. All right, this is my awesome login box. Excellent. Mission accomplished. 
All right, close that out. But then something happens, okay? Then the boss comes in the room or uh, the, the client comes in the room and they say, you know, I really need, um, I really need a checkbox. My lawyers have got with me and said, uh, you know, we need people to agree to the legalese before they can log in. And you say, well, no problem. I'll just open up Designer here. Loginbox.ui. All right, we can just open that back up. Let's find a button. Checkbox. Drop that guy right there. Oops, not right there. Right there. We'll say, I agree to the legalese. Okay. Rename it. Legalese checkbox. Save it. Oops. Save it. Close out a cute designer. All right, now let's run our Pi UIC again. Convert it to Python. All right. Great, we have our checkbox, but oh, what happened to our print statement? Let's see, let's open loginbox.py. Emacs is telling me it's changed. Let's reload it. My print statement's gone. Why is it gone? Because this is generated code, guys. This was generated by PyUIC5 from our UI file. So every time we go and edit that thing, this code is going to get overwritten. Now, if you're smart, you'll say, wait a minute. I could just write it out to another file and copy and paste the changes into my script. And you can do that, and that is a way to work, but it is not a great way to work. And it is certainly not the way that this program was designed to be used, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you how it was designed to be used, but first, we're just going to blithely ignore that. We're going to be smart. We're going to say, and when I say smart, I mean too smart for our own good. We're going to be smart. We're going to say, no, I'm just going to copy in changes from here on out, and I'm not going to overwrite this file, okay? So, we've got this thing, we've got this class, and we see down here, okay, well, it creates a widget and does some magic here that we don't maybe understand. But now I need my class to do something. I need a callback method, okay? I need it to authenticate. It's a login box. So I want it to log in, right? I want it to check a username and password. So let's just write a basic function here. Let's write a basic method, well, or function, but wait a minute, we can't just write a function because our authentication function is going to need access to that password value and that username value that are in there. Okay, so uh, I guess we need to create a method. Where should we create a method? Well, the obvious place is in this class right here because that's where our, our login uh, widgets are. So let's create a class. We'll call it Authenticate. Okay. And just for simplicity, we'll say we'll get the username equals self dot username edit text. We'll get the password self self dot password edit dot text. All right, and we'll say if username equals user and password equals pass. Okay, so in this case, we want to log them in. Uh, for now, I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and show a little pop-up box. We'll use Q message box dot information sorry typing malfunction there q message box that information now the first argument we have to make in one of these message boxes is a parent widget uh, so obviously the parent widget would be our login box um, so I guess self right that's our login box okay and then we'll say success 
You logged in, bro. Or sis, as the case may be. All right, so if it's not that, we're going to show an error message. Qt widgets. Q message box. Dot critical. Again, we need the parent widget to be self. Fail. No login for you. All right. So the last thing we need to do is we want to connect uh, that submit button. When it's clicked, we want to run our authenticate function. So self. You know, we got to make that connection up here and set up UI. That makes sense, right? Sure. Submit button dot clicked dot connect authenticate all right well masterful coding here let's try this out right I'm sorry if I'm being a little snarky I'm just trying to point out where we're doing the wrong thing so those of you listening with one ear what I'm showing you right now is the wrong thing okay not the right thing all right so let's try this a uh, user tab order is a little bit out of whack here but that's alright user pass login login mm, nothing's happening here it's a little weird let's try something else let's try user and blah 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 here again nothing happening so maybe I did something wrong here oh, oh, oh. self.authenticate there we go course okay there we go always check your uh, your linter there good practice okay sorry for that little detour let's go back again let's see user and pass and login uh oh I killed it what happened here excuse me <coughs> what happened here? Qt widgets. Q message box. Information self success. Information Q widget. Blah blah blah. Argument one has unexpected type UI form. Okay, so I'm I'm playing a bit here. I know exactly what's happening. Let me explain what's going on here. So we kind of approach this with the impression that UI form is our window and that's not really correct if you'll take a look at this class definition UI form is subclassed from object the generic default Python object it's not subclassed from Q widget it's not subclassed from even Q object so it is not a QT thing at all or cute sorry it's not a cute object at all it's just a Python object this setup UI function is simply created to take some sort of Q widget here, that would be form, and it is meant to set up a UI on that form. And we can see that down here at the bottom, right here, where we create a Q widget and pass it to set up UI form. So if we want access to our parent widget here, we can't do that inside of this class because the parent widget doesn't exist in this class okay now perhaps we could save a reference to form here somewhere and use that okay but that gets a little messy uh, now if you know cute maybe you'll say wait we don't need a parent widget for these dialogues let's just set it to none okay let's do that and you'll see that solves our immediate problem. And uh, so let's go back here. We'll say user pass login. Okay, you logged in. So that worked. But we still have problems here because let's say what we really ought to do from a login box is send a signal. Okay, so let's define a signal, right? 
that's what we would do. We should define a custom signal on this object. So authenticated equals Qt core PyQt signal. Sorry, auto completion fail signal. Okay. And then instead of showing a dialog box, okay, we're going to emit that signal. So uh, self dot authenticated emit. Oops, there is something wrong. Okay, checker is just a little behind tonight. All right. Okay, now let's go back to our shell and try to log, try to run this, okay? User pass login. Oh, another error. Okay, type UI form cannot be converted to PyQt course Q object. Boy, that's a very strange error. What does that even mean? Okay. So what's happening here? You cannot emit signals from a class that's not subclassed from QObject. Now, any Q widget, Q main window, most Q classes are subclassed from QObject. It's sort of the base class for most, not all, but most Q classes. Okay, but this is not subclassed from those. This is just a regular Python object. We cannot define signals on this. Okay, so as you can see, this is just a couple of examples of where we're just running into these problems. Okay, we're, we're tying ourselves in knots, painting ourselves into a corner, and it's just not going well. All right, let's, let's close this. So I'm going to stop showing you the wrong way, okay, because this is just the way I've seen other people do this that has messed them up. We're going to rerun PyUIC5. We're going to skip the X because we don't really need that. And we're going to regenerate our login box library. Okay. Let's open that up. Okay. So we just have the UI form. All right. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how this should be used, how this is meant to be used. Okay. And I hope I've demonstrated the kind of knots you tie yourself in when you don't use it the right way so that you'll understand when I say the right way I'm trying to save you trouble okay not trying to tell you how to write your code just trying to save you a lot of trouble so the correct way to do this is we're gonna actually create a second file okay we're gonna call it login box main dot pi you can call it whatever you want it doesn't really matter and this is going to be our main script, okay? That loginbox.py, we're going to treat like a library. We're not going to edit it. We're not even, we don't even really need to open it, okay? Unless we need to refer to what's in it, okay? But we're going to create a second script and import that other script. Okay, now right away, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, I don't really want to create something that complicated. I'm, I'm used to maybe just keeping everything in one file, nice and simple, one script. I understand. I completely understand. I, I, there's a big leap between creating a Python script and a big Python application with lots of files, okay? And there's issues of code organization. I get it. But what I'm telling you is this is how this tool was designed to be used. And if you're going to use Qt Designer to make your GUIs, and we'll later talk about whether that's a good idea or not, if you're going to use Qt Designer, this is the way you need to use it, okay? So we're going to import our file. So from login box import UI form, okay? We're also going to import Qt widgets. So from PyQt5 import Q widgets and I like to alias this as QTW it just saves a little space and we're going to get Qt core Q 
QTC, just a space saving thing. Okay, so with any cute thing, let's create our if main. Uh, we'll create our app. Q application, pass in an empty list. Um, and then we're going to say app.exec. So what are we going to create in here? Now in the other file, they created a Q widget, they assigned, uh, they created a, a UI form object and then ran the setup UI on the Q widget. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new class. And this class is going to be the, our main login window. Okay, we're going to call this login window. And it's going to be based on Q widget. Now remember at the very beginning of this video when we created our widget and we created it based on Q widget or widget it was just a thing in the menu. The other options were like main window or dialog. Whatever you chose there is what you need to subclass here. Okay, so we chose widget, so we need to subclass Q widget. Okay, so then we're going to override the init method. And I'm going to do args and keyword args. The first thing you always need to do when you override init in a cute object is to run super init. And we're just going to pass along those args and those keyword args. Sorry, args. So what that does is all that's doing is passing along any arguments that were passed in so that this still behaves in every way like a Q widget. Okay, and then we're just going to add functionality. But just to make sure, let's say widget equals login window widget dot show. Okay, so now if we run this, oops, login box main, right, we should see just a regular Q widget with nothing in it. Very good. That's what we see. Now we got to get our UI form in there, the one that we designed in uh, Qt Designer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of this UI form object and we're going to assign it to self.ui. Then we call the setup UI uh, method. We call the setup UI method and we pass in self. So self is this login window object, the Q widget. We're going to pass that into setup UI. What setup UI is going to do is it's going to build that GUI that we designed onto this Q widget. Okay. Let's see that in action. Okay, let's go back to our terminal. Run our thing, and here we go. We've got our login box. Very good. Good. Of course, it doesn't do anything yet. So, where do we add those methods that we want the callbacks for? Well, we add them right here on our login window. That is totally the appropriate place. So, authenticate self. So now, we can say we need to get, say if username equals user and password equals pass qtw.q message box message box information now we can call information we can use self we can use our login window as a parent widget because it is a widget okay success you are logged in. All right. Else, we'll do the critical. Self fail. You did not log in. Now, I haven't got username and password yet, and I want to show you. So, to access those widgets, okay, how do we get to those? Well, they are part of that UI object. Okay, they have references there. So we can say self.ui.username edit.text. Okay, and that will be where we get username. 
and password likewise is self.ui.user oops password edit dot text okay and to make our connection let's go back up to init to connect our our button to our callback we will say self.ui dot submit button dot clicked dot connect self dot authenticate all right now let's go back here let's try it again user pass login you are logged in user gibberish log in you did not log in awesome so that works so just to review the, the takeaway points here all right so when you use cute designer do not edit this file that is generated that is number one do not edit this file okay so if i were to go back and edit my ui file in cute designer and regenerate this file it wouldn't change anything okay as long as I didn't rename username and password it wouldn't change anything I would not uh, have to copy and paste code or anything like that I would just have to edit this to take advantage of whatever new functionality I added okay so don't edit this file instead you're gonna subclass your widget or main window or whatever you based your UI on and you're going to add your functionality your callbacks your signals your slots all that stuff is going to go in this class okay now there's another way to do this uh, that you can do if you don't like the idea of all your your uh, your inputs and things being under this UI namespace if you want it just to be like self dot username edit there's another way to do this you can actually do multiple inheritance with UI sorry. sorry about that little keyboard glitch you can add UI form here and then just run self dot setup UI self okay I'll tell you what let's go ahead and see that in action and if you do that you can get rid of this dot UI business Let's see if that actually works yeah okay user pass good okay so that might be a little cleaner if you don't like having that UI business uh, it's a little more esoteric and implied it's not as explicit uh, but there you go that is the proper way to use that now before I go uh, I just want to address the question is cute designer really good for a beginner to use when working with PyQt I really don't think it is okay Cute Designer and more specifically Pi UIC5 was designed to help people who are working on large programs to use Designer and to use it efficiently. Okay, that's why it generates this kind of weird uh, abstract class here. Okay, rather than actually generating a widget like you would expect it to. The reason it does things the way it does is because it's designed to help people creating large applications who are going to have to go back and edit those things again and again and again. And it's a brilliant design. It's a great design. I'm not knocking the design. But if you're someone who's just starting out and you want to keep things simple and intuitive, it's a little unintuitive. And it certainly creates an extra layer of code that you have to understand. Uh, it creates some confusion and it kind of hides what's going on okay so like I have to just know that submit button exists in my UI form I just have to know that username edit exists in there it's not explicit here in this code alright and that's a little abstract sometimes for a beginner who's just trying to wrap their mind around how do we create GUIs in Qt okay 
And to be honest, it really doesn't save you a lot of work. It saves you knowing a few things. It might save you a few trips to the documentation. Well, it may be a wash, actually, by the time you actually understand this. But I don't really think it saves you much work. Um, and I've been ridiculed for this point of view. I've had people tell me, look, it's current year and nobody hand codes GUIs. Well, I'm telling you, you're wrong. Um, plenty of people, including me, hand code GUIs uh, in this toolkit, in HTML, in whatever. Uh, even in 2019, and they'll be doing it in 2020 and 2021 and, you know, probably for several years after that. Okay, because it's not that hard. It's really not that much effort to just hand code it. And when the alternative is, you know, doing all the stuff we were doing in Designer, clicking this button and clicking this and finding the property and then editing that and then moving this here and, you know, you do all that, it's not that much less effort than just coding, okay? Uh, so if you're a beginner and your desire is to just say, I want to keep this all in one file, you don't like the idea of it being multiple files and having to do imports between files. You just want to keep it simple and straightforward. By all means, just do that. By, but do it by hand coding. Don't do it by messing around with designer and creating this weird class and having to go back in and, you know, or messing yourself up by editing this file or anything like that. Just write it, okay? It's really not that much work. So, something to think about. And, uh, as always, do check out my book. It goes through all this stuff. It does teach you how to use Designer. It also teaches you how to hand code these things. Um, so that you can get a handle on that. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I'm going to leave you some links in the description. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it and gave you something to think about. Uh, best wishes. God bless you all.